All right, so this is um, made in Kentucky, sourced to PA for Hidden Still. This is 100% corn and it's aged five years. So that's pretty much what we need to know. This is a bean product. <laughs> <laughs> it is very peanutty, yes. Wow, yeah. Uh-huh. This is 100%. How much you want to bet this is like a higher end Jim Beam rye type thing? Like that sort of deal? It might be. I don't know. But that's know. weird because that what does Jim Beam. What do they make that's a corn whiskey? They just make it for like experiments and shit. That's fair. Yeah, I bet you that. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense that it's aged five years and that the small craft distillery could make it. Yeah. Or could source it. Hmm. It tastes like a bean product. This is a bean product. This is 100% Jim Beam. Yep. It has to be. I can't, I can't give any other tasting notes other than this is, a, this is a Jim Beam corn whiskey. It's got the right burn. It's got the right, like, tannic notes. It's got a little bit notes. of peanut. It's not as pronounced as it is in some other whiskeys, but it's there. Well, what proof is it? What proof is it? What's your proof? It is 92. It's actually a decent proof, too. Yeah. It's because I was gonna say this is flavorful. It definitely like. No, this is solid. No, this actually is pretty good. This is twenty eight bucks after tax. That's not bad, yeah. especially for crap like whiskey. This is what they're doing to make the money while they make their stuff. Yeah. And this is a solid way to make some money. If people start finding out about this, this would sell as a corn whiskey. I'd say so. I buy, I would replace this bottle. I think. I think that I would buy a bottle after tasting this, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. I'd buy a bottle. Of it's, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, it tastes like Jim Beam. It tastes like a Jim Beam product. Not regular Jim Beam, but it tastes like one of their yeah, products. Yeah, it tastes like a Jim Beam product. What else am I getting, though? <clears throat> like, it has, like, the malt whiskey funk. Like, I can't really describe it other than just the funk. Yep. Um, does not have the vanilla or the, um, like cornbread or banana bread that the last one had. No, it doesn't. I think this one took on a lot more of the barrel than that one did. Because I bet you that it, because I bet you it took on other flavors that are overpowering that. I bet you that if we were to add water to this, which I wouldn't do at this low of a proof, yeah. you would start to taste a little bit of that. It would yeah. start to come through a bit more. Maybe. It's already very light. Like this is, this is a I mean, this is almost like piss yellow. This is not like... That's the color, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a piss drinking. That's classified information. Yeah, adding water to that. Yeah, it's too light already, I think. But I mean... We can't be picky. No, this is... It's definitely a Jim Beam product. It's the flavor profile does, isn't really too distinct from Jim Beam either. It's almost like they sourced it directly aged from Jim Beam and just put their name on it, they which I think is what they have. did. They very well might have. It's just as is bottled in PA. This is, uh, That's not necessarily a complaint. That means this is a hidden gem if you're looking for a corn whiskey. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, you have and no at that price, I would keep buying it at this price any day. So I let's see, in PA, you have what you have. You this is pretty much it. Corn. You have this and you have Balcona's True Blue, which is hard to find. And or baby at least, blue. at least, well, almost double the price. Yeah, Baby Blue is like 40 bucks, I think. And this is, yeah, okay, so yeah, like 50% more yeah. price. This, I mean, if you're in PA, you're looking for a corn whiskey, you find a store that has this, get it. Because this is, it's solid. It, yeah. Again, not, nothing necessarily to write home about. But it's a good corn whiskey mm -hmm. that you can't really complain about. It's just there. It does what it, it does what they want it to do. Clearly, and it's clearly from Jim Beam. I have no doubt about it. Yeah, like again, the flavor notes like it has the same kind of jean, like bean funk on the nose and the palate. Like tasting wise, it is a lot more barrel. Like it does, it does taste kind of, kind of tannic, I guess. But, like, but at this price, that's yeah. Almost to be expected. Because it's not sweet. It's kind of spicy, I guess. Which is weird because a corn whiskey isn't usually that spicy. 
No. It's usually really smooth and, I mean, it's called mellow corn for a reason. It's mellow. I would say, honestly, that because it's not really spicy, but it's not sweet, I would say, like, the biggest note on this is probably, like, tobacco and, like... I could agree with that. Yeah, I can see that. I, I'm trying to think of, like, what else has that similar flavor, but I can't think of anything. Like, it's right almost here. like leather. Yeah, leather, to tobacco, I guess that's a, the best two things to put. It's almost like, it's not oak, but it's, like, almost like a woody kind of flavor. Yeah. Almost like like a lighter wood. It's like they got a decent amount of tannins in it, but not like not like that widow Jane where it literally tasted like they took tannins out of wood. like a cabernet. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Tannic I, like a cabernet, but it's a seventy dollar whiskey. I really did not like that widow Jane. <laughs> None of us really did. No, we did not. I know you said it got better, but like It got better but it, got it, did, it better, didn't but it still wasn't great. Yeah, but I mean, but this, this is, it's, it's not even like it's tannic in a bad way, it's just, that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not paying 70, 60, 70 bucks for this. Yeah. At 30 bucks, you're getting what you're getting, and it's, it's worth it. That being said, it is significantly better than the way to gain it for five bucks. Oh, yeah. No, solid. 